Lightning may have provided the spark needed for life to begin on our planet Earth. In a way, you and I exist because of it. Hi guys, I'm Pratik and you're watching Eclectic. On this channel, I bring together ideas from diverse fields of knowledge to give you guys a different perspective to look at the world, from your history to your future, all in one place. If you are someone who wants to understand your past, improve your present and shape your future, you are at the right place. Welcome and get aboard. The process of emergence of life on our planet Earth is a lot like the process of cooking. Cooking? Really? Let me explain. While cooking, you can have all the ingredients in one place. Salt, vegetables, spices, grains, flour, oil, etc. But without a proper process to mix them together and cook them for just the right amount of time, you cannot make an edible dish. Without proper process and conditions, these are just raw materials, nothing else. Making a dish is less about ingredients and more about the recipe. This applies even to the emergence of life on earth which began somewhere around 3.5 billion years ago. For the first living being to be born, the necessary ingredients were water, a warm climate, a thick atmosphere, the proper nutrients, variety of organic and inorganic materials and an energy source. Now those are ingredients. What's the recipe? Without proper process and environmental conditions, the right amount of heat or cold, you just have a bunch of raw materials going nowhere. You need someone to initiate the process. So who was it that helped initiate the process of bringing life on earth? Religious people say it was the hand of God, but the scientific community knows that it was the work of various natural forces. One such force was electricity in the form of lightning. If you were to time travel back in time to set foot on earth 4 billion years ago, you would have to do so while wearing an oxygen cylinder because the earth had no oxygen to breathe. The temperatures were much higher due to the constant volcanic eruptions that occurred on the surface of the earth. Earth was an unformed donut of molten rock and it was constantly bombarded with meteorites and asteroids. It was literally the hell on earth. But soon bombardments became less frequent and earth began to cool off, while gases discharged from the volcanic eruptions came together to form the atmosphere of earth. With the formation of the atmosphere began the process of bringing life to earth. At this point, most of the ingredients that were needed for life to begin on earth were readily available. It was built around compounds that contain elements such as carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and phosphorus. Complex sequences of these elements bond together forming the very building blocks of life. They form essential organic molecules such as sugars, enzymes, proteins and DNA. Everything was in place except for one important element which is essential for making DNA, RNA and ATP adenosine triphosphate, the energy source of all the known life. While cooking, if you find out that an ingredient is missing, you just have to visit the nearest grocery store. But creation of life on earth was not as simple as cooking a dish after all. That one missing essential element was phosphorus. It was locked away in insoluble and unreactive rocks. So how did early life on earth get access to phosphorus? Until very recently, scientists had only one explanation for this. They believed that phosphorus was delivered to earth by meteorites. Some meteorites contain a mineral called schreibersite, which is generally a rare iron nickel phosphide mineral. But if you think deeply about this theory, you would realize that such a frequent bombardments from the meteorites would have killed any kind of early life form. So if not meteorites, then how the hell did our distant ancestors, the microscopic beings, get their hands on phosphorus? One new discovery suggests that it was the lightning that made available that one missing ingredient called phosphorus. In 1954, Stanley Miller, an American chemist, successfully performed a landmark experiment on the origin of life. The miller ure experiment was the first ever to produce the man-made building blocks of life, amino acids. He produced amino acids from inorganic molecules and a spark of electricity. He did a very famous experiment where he published in 1953. He showed that you can form simple organic molecules important for life using very simple starting materials that represented the early Earth. The spark represents lightning. So the idea was to simulate a primitive ocean atmosphere system. So the liquid water was put in there to represent the early Earth's oceans, and the gases, methane and ammonia, were introduced to represent what they thought was an accurate portrayal of the early Earth's atmosphere. And then the spark represented a lightning discharge, which is a 
a form of energy that was probably very common on the early Earth. Now, found that not only can you form amino acids, which is something that, that Miller had shown in his 1953 work, but by introducing this external molecule called cyanamide, you can cause these amino acids to link together and form larger compounds called peptides. And in the order of the evolution of organic chemicals, you have a progression from amino acids to peptides and ultimately to things like proteins. This is a, a, a next step, something that addresses one of the major challenges that remains in prebiotic chemistry, which is how do you go from making small molecules like amino acids to larger, more complex compounds like peptides? It's ultimately about the origins of life. And this is a process along that, that pathway is trying to understand uh, how chemicals evolved on the early Earth to ultimately give rise to the first forms of organisms on, on the Earth. Scientific community now have realized that the Miller-Urey experiment was one of the most successful experiments on the origin of life. It established the fact that the lightning may have played a vital role in the creation of life on Earth. But coming back to getting access to phosphorus, did lightning deliver it to early life form? If yes, then how? Lightning strikes can heat up the surfaces to nearly 5000 degrees Fahrenheit. This immense heating can forge new minerals that were not there before. Fascinating stuff, right? In the study conducted by Yale University, researchers examined a lightning blasted clump of rock called filgrite. The team found out that the little balls of shreversite had formed within the rock. And as I already told you, shreversite contains phosphorus. Hence, we have the proof that lightning strikes can create phosphorus-rich shreversite here on Earth without any extraterrestrial help from those nasty meteorites. While I was reading about all this, I thought to myself, a few lightning strikes cannot be enough to provide all the phosphorus needed for the emergence of life. So I decided to find out just how many lightning strikes would be needed for preparing the recipe of creating life. As I dug deeper, I was embarrassed to realize just how little I know about my planet, my home. Today about 560 million lightning bolts flash over our planet Earth every year. 560 million. It is a fairly simple phenomenon to understand. For lightning to occur, you need cold air and warm air. When they meet, the warm air goes up and it creates thunderstorm clouds. The cold air has ice crystals and warm air has water droplets. During the storm, they bump into each other and this rubbing makes static electric charges in the clouds and you get to see lightning. Warm air is important for this to happen and that's why whenever the earth's surface gets warm, it is more likely to cause thunderstorms. That is why when carbon dioxide increases, the land surface gets warmer and strong warm upward currents of air are more likely to produce lightning. I am telling about this connection between carbon dioxide and lightning because 4 billion years ago, the earth's atmosphere had significant amount of carbon dioxide and therefore the earth was hotter and more prone to storms. <laughs> Carbon dioxide, the very thing that is destroying our planet today, helped initiate the process of emergence of life on Earth in the first place. Well, that is the way of the universe. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Yale University researchers calculated that 4 billion years ago, it is likely that because of a lot of carbon dioxide, anywhere between 1 billion to 4 billion bolts flashed every year over our young planet Earth. When lightning strikes kept hitting our planet for let us say 1 billion years, they gave anywhere from 100 to 11,000 kilograms of phosphorus every year. And that is enough phosphorus for the life to begin its journey on Earth. You see, you don't need it to be all over the planet. You just need one location where every ingredient is available, where every environmental condition is satisfied. And when that happens, the recipe for creating life is ready. Charles Darwin once even speculated that life may have evolved in a warm little pond. So what was it? Meteorites or lightning? Hmm, maybe a bit of both. Science, unlike religion, is always open to new ideas. But no matter whatever the cause, one thing is pretty clear that this magnificent natural force called electricity has played an important role in bringing life on earth. It is the giver of life and probably the reason why you and I exist. But how the hell did we petty humans manage to control this magnificent force called electricity? Today we use it in our homes, offices and everywhere. How the hell did we humans make electrons do our bidding? Well that is again a very fascinating story which involves a lot of scientists from all around the world. If you are interested, watch my video on how humans enslaved electricity. This is me, Pratik, signing off. Oh, wait, 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 wait guys. 
By the way, if you find my content interesting enough, drop a like to let that goddamn algorithm know that my content is interesting enough to promote across YouTube. Thank you very much. See you soon. And if you want to read more about this topic, check out the description.